Hello Artisan, welcome to my studio. Today is a good chance for us to get a behind the scenes look at my favorite art supplies. Now if you're new to acrylic paints or water media, this is going to be pretty informative. And if you've been around a while, maybe you'll learn something new. But I thought that I would give you a little bit of an inside look at how our supplies work. Here are three acrylic paints by Golden in three different consistencies. First, we have this very fluid high flow, almost like uh, water, dripping out and it just flows very smoothly. You can use it for watercolor effects, um, to splash around and splatter. There's a lot of things that you can do with the high flow. This one's fluid. You can see it's just a little bit thicker and um, and it's it's got a great transparency as well when you want it to be. And then for our thickest paint, of course, we have um, our heavy body here. I'm picking my favorite blue-green kind of colors, so we have some comparison. Now, much like the high flow here, we have acrylic ink. Acrylic ink by um, Dale Rowney, which is um, uh, called FW. The acrylic ink and the high flow are probably interchangeable, very similar in consistency and what you would use them for. They're really great for illustrate, illustrating as well as your mixed media. So acrylic, all these products are acrylic based and um, they're water soluble, but once they're dry, they're not gonna move. Once you've got them down on your canvas, let's go ahead and just give ourselves a little brush. Here's our ink first. And that goes on. I've got a lot of water in my brush, so it's kind of making some interesting marks there. Here is our high flow. That's got a great coverage. Well, it's Golden Golden's pigment load, which means it's higher pigment amount to its binder. Now let's see about this one. This is our fluid. So high flow is much more flowy. Fluid is still pretty fluid, but you know it's got a little bit of body to it, so you have a little more control over it. And then I've got the heavy body here, and that's got more, more of an ability to make um, texture and marks and very opaque coverage. There's the three basic acrylic paints, but I have one more that's in the acrylic family. It's called acrylic wash. And what's unique about this product is that it's kind of a little bit in between our heavy body and our fluid, so it's got a, a nice flow to it. It usually only comes in these smaller tubes, but I think there's a couple companies that might make acrylic wash in a little bit larger tubes. And it is like acrylic paint in the sense that once it's down, you can't reactivate it with water. It's very opaque and it's got a matte sheen to it. And I had to ask um, Melissa Dottie why this was her favorite medium. It's very similar to acrylic paint. It works like acrylic paint, but it doesn't have quite the color shift and it also dries matte. So if that's your preference, that's the acrylic wash. So these are all acrylic based. One product that's still in the water media family is watercolors, and they're interchangeable because their base uses water for cleanup. It's okay to cross over with a little bit of watercolor and a little bit of acrylic, and it's fine to use them together. So that's what would be called mixed media. And you can use them interchangeably. The difference is, well, here's our watercolor. Once the watercolors dry, you can add water to it again and activate it again. And let me show you what I mean by that. Here is one that I just tested out on a piece of paper. So I did it thin and kind of transparent. Here's the thing, this is a brush of mine that's got water on it. When I, let me move this out of the way for you. When I blend it, I'm reactivating what is already dry. Now, if you were to do this with acrylic paint, it's gonna stay put, it's not going anywhere. See how this is all coming back up again and I can reactivate. If this pile, if any of these five here, if they dry completely solid, they're done. You can't use them anymore. But if acrylic or if watercolor paint dries, you just add water to it, reactivate, and you can use it again. You can uh, rub it back. It's not gonna come completely off, but you can see reactivate watercolor. So that's the difference. Now, if you want watercolor to stay put, you can coat it with a matte medium or a fixative, and it's not gonna go anywhere. But while you still have that on your surface, see, they can be rubbed back again. So that's watercolor, and that's the difference between watercolor and any acrylic paint. And they can all be mixed with all sorts of other products. That's the beauty of acrylic paint. For, for when you're making mixed media, mixed means any product that's not just one thing. So it could just be acrylic and watercolor. It could be acrylic and graphite. They go wonderfully together. 
And that's why I love this medium. It's so versatile. Look at how many choices I have. I can make it look like oil paint. I can make it look like watercolor. My choices are so broad with acrylic paint and that's why it's my favorite medium. Let's talk about all the things that we can do with these different types of mediums and colors. So if you thought that acrylic paint had a lot of choices, the mediums is just overwhelming. And I know that that's where a lot of artists get stuck. So I thought I'd show you a little of the ins and outs of some of the supplies. But the first thing that I want to tell you, and the most important, is that you don't need any of this. This is all optional. The beauty of acrylic paint is all you really need is water to make it work. But let's have some fun figuring out how we can play with all these different mediums if you choose to get any of them. Now I know I can separate my um, mediums into a couple groups. Uh, I have a bunch of products here that are all about making thick textures, like molding paste, clear tar gel, I'm going to push them all off to the side. I have a crackle paste. That one's uh, going to do exactly what it says and make a crackling texture. Heavy gel matte medium. And uh, that was more molding paste. Oh, and glass bead gel. So I'm putting those all over to the side. We'll play with those in a bit. Those are all heavy, thick uh, mediums that will create great texture in your work. Now for um, making more smooth texture to mix in with your paints, we have something like we have polymer mediums, we have matte medium, which I know you've probably heard of the most, acrylic glazing, GAC 100, which is almost the same thing as acrylic glazing, uh, soft gel. Soft gel has a little body to it. These are more, more fluid, but they're all going to be softer, easier to mix in and to make a little bit more of a fluid mix for your paints when you mix them in with acrylic paint. Now, the ones that I'm not as familiar with, the polymer medium, I believe, has got a nice high shine and uh, it starts off milky and clears upon drying. I've used it a little bit. Matte medium I use a lot. That's great as a really high-end professional glue, per se, to mix with like papers when you want to um, put in collage material into your work. Acrylic glazing liquid gloss goes right into um, your paint. What's really nice about using products like the acrylic glazing and the GAC 100 is that um, instead of using water which might break down the binders in the paint, these are the binders. So you're just adding a little more binder which means that you're kind of thinning out the color a little bit and extending it and maybe keeping it wet a little bit longer, especially this GAC 100. 100 will extend the wetness of it so it'll stay wet longer without drying out. Some more workability. Uh, we'll play around with those in just a minute. I'll finish telling you a few other things. Um, Let's see, I like to finish off with a gloss varnish, but there are matte varnishes and there are in-between satin varnishes. This is a brush on, there are also spray varnishes that work really well. Uh, this will protect your work when you're all finished. It's not something that you use to mix in with your work, this is a finishing product. Now, along the way though, if you want, you can either use this or I would say maybe even a matte medium. If you're working with a product that um, you want it to hold in place, say you've used graphite pencil, charcoal, pastel, or even layers of paint, or if you mixed in watercolor, and you want to keep it so that you can work the next layer and not have it lift up, you can use Spectrafix Fixative, spray it on, you can use it indoors, it's, used, uh, what's, it's made out of like a milk casein, so it's all natural, it's not going to have a stinky smell, this is an amazing product. You can also, while you're working, brush over everything with a matte medium. Now, while you're brushing, it might lift a little bit, but that kind of gives it a nice uh, textured look. Uh, but once it's dry, it's going to hold it in place. Matte medium, I want to just point out really quick, we've always asked, what's the difference between matte medium and soft gel? They work the same. The difference is one's going to be matte, which means no shine. And when it says gloss, that means that there's going to be a shine when it dries. So if you want a shiny product, use one that says gloss. For me, they're interchangeable. I don't mind if there's a shine in my work, um, but there's the matte medium. And then uh, I learned about this from our lesson from Taylor Lee. Actually, I learned about that and the GAC 100 from Taylor Lee. If you put this a few drops in your water, it helps reduce the surface tension of the water, which means it's just gonna make everything flow. So if you want that really painterly look, a wetting agent, a few drops in your water, that's what that's for. And then the GAC 100 also helps extend it and make it look more painterly. It doesn't dry so quickly. So for those of you who are a little bit slower in your painting, this is a great product for that purpose. So I'm going to put a little bit of this here and we'll mix it in with our paint. I'm also going to put a little bit of matte medium 
although my um, lid is always hard to open, you know. So um, let's put a little bit of that on our plate. I'm gonna get out some watercolor paper because you can always use watercolor paper for your foundation. You can gesso it first if you want. If not, if it's thick, it's okay. Here's some polymer medium. We're just gonna play with these. And obviously clean the rim because they're hard to open up once that paint dries. And some acrylic glazing. Let's see, did I do? I did the GAC and acrylic glazing here. It's a little thicker. So if you want the thinnest of all the paints, that's this one, the GAC 100. There are several other series of this for different purposes to mix in to make your paint friendly with painting on fabric. There's all different kinds of products, but you know, we're already overwhelmed a bit. So let's just play with what we've got. I'm just going to mix them in a little bit here um, and see what happens. So I've got a little of this. And I wanted to see what happens when I mix it with. This is the acrylic glazing. And it just thins it out just a little bit more. It'll keep it wet longer. Now the opacity, opacity, excuse me, um, it dries clear. All of these dry clear, so you don't have to worry about ruining your painting. But I will say this, the heavy body ones don't necessarily dry clear. So that's the difference between them. So now it's giving me this nice glaze. If I have something underneath, especially if I had collage material underneath, this would be really great for making a nice thin wash over it. A nice permanent wash too, and I'll hold all of that in place. What else could I mix up? I wanna do something with this a little bit heavier. This one is just matte medium. Now, I use matte medium just to cover over my, also pretty much the same. I think we're gonna get very similar results of all of these, and I think that was the pur purpose of me showing you. They're very interchangeable. I think the thinnest of all of them would be this GAC, and as you're painting, if you wanted to paint a nice large, canvas and you want to keep that paint wet longer this is the one that's going to keep it from um, drying out and maybe make it move quite smoothly oh that mixed really beautifully in with this heavy body look at how smooth that spreads out just by mixing a little that was my watercolor paint there although technically because it's water-based it could be mixed in so I'm just playing with these just to show you how, you know, it's these fluid ones are just to mix in and give yourself, extend your paint and make them blend. And you know, if I wanna mix this in, a little bit of this with this polymer, and next thing I know it's layering really beautifully, blending right in with this other one. Now let's have some fun and pull out some of those textured paints, um, or textured mediums, I should say, and see what happens when we mix those in. Um, so our heavy gel matte medium, here we go. Let's pull that open. Brand new bottle for you. Take a look at this. I need a clean palette knife. And look at how much heavier this is. So it's like toothpaste. And, um, and I can put it here and I'll mix a little bit of paint with it. I'm gonna put just a little less on there so that you can see. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. You can mix it in with your paint, which is what we're doing right now, or you can um, you can use it afterwards to coat over it, or you can start beforehand and make a nice texture. With this heavy body, it's gonna hold its shape. So if I want thick, gooey textures, and I want it to hold that shape, that's what heavy body is gonna be able to do for me a bit. But if you really, really want the heaviest, look at how it leaves all these peaks and valleys. Can you see that? It's leaving all the texture. I can draw into it and it's gonna stay pretty much the way I shape it. Now it might level out just a little bit. It will mostly hold its shape. But if you really want the heaviest of heavy body, that's when we pull out the molding paste. And I played with this in Color My Life. What's really fun is you know, I can put this down. I can make all kinds of, it's got a little paint in there. I can make all kinds of texture. And once that's dry, that's gonna stay, which means I can make a texture and paint over it. Or since it's not dry yet, I can mix this with a paint. Now I have myself a nice heavy body and I can make all kinds of um, marks with that one here. I'm gonna get a little more paint mixed in with my molding paste. That's what we're using now. Um, one thing that you can do with molding paste that I really like, I'm gonna pull out one of my stencils. This is an interesting stencil here. It's a little bit thicker. It's by Dina Wakely. I don't know if they're still made, but it's uh, thicker than a regular stencil. So I can put it here and I can use this as kind of a guide. So this is the molding paste mixed with color. You can do it with or without the color. You can paint it after you've used the molding paste, let it dry and then paint it. 
or you can mix it with the color. All of these are intermixable. And then when I pull this off, I have this nice thick texture. Can you see that? So now we've got all different kinds of textures happening here and possibility because if you really want to go and dig deep into mixed media, understanding that you have all these options for making really cool product, it's just it's fun that way. I'm gonna get a different color and mix it in with one of these others, maybe the glass beads, so you can see the difference. What's gonna pop on here? Well, what's opposite of this? Probably a primary magenta is gonna be our best bet. Let me get a fresh plate. I'm just shuffling things around here in my studio. I have more product to show you even after we've played with mediums. That's all about my favorite stuff right now. So here we go. Let's see what happens when we mix some glass beads. So this is again one of the heavy body mediums that's just going to apply. You can't see it but it's got these little tiny glass beads in them. And then it's the same thing. If I want to mix in the color, it's going to make a heavy texture. You can hear that kind of gritty sound. That's the glass beads. And again, it's going to leave that on your page and we'll have to come back to it when it's dry and see what happens. Or if you want it to leave a more translucent across it. We can use it right here with no paint and see what happens. But each of these products is just a way to play with the medium. The most important I think is to understand how the matte medium and the glazing mediums work because those are the most likely important products to use but the rest of these are all just for fun and play. Uh, let's see what else I have. I have crackle paste. Pretty sure we're gonna have to wait a while for this one to dry but why not? Let's mix it with a little bit of red and see what happens when we let it dry. Now it's pink. This one is going to dry opaque. It's not a transparent one. So I'm going to put it right over this. It's got a little chunk of something in it. There we go. I'm going to put it right over this. I think I need a little bit more. Don't put your paint palette in. Get a clean one. Otherwise you're going to regret it. There we go. It's fun to just play. I think the best thing I can say, if you have products and you're just not sure, just play with it. They all go together. It doesn't matter if it's a if it's a water-based product, acrylic, watercolor, all of it, you can use it all together. Uh, just don't put oil paint underneath this. Oil paint can even go on top of all of your acrylic. That's the beauty of it. Oh, that makes a nice hot pink. There you go. So that one has a lot of opacity. Um, white opaque medium. That means it's not, it's going to, it's going to change your color quite a bit. So you could um, just put the crackle medium down, let it crackle, and then put paint over it as well. But this is what the experiment's for. I've seen, I think Ivy Newport do a really beautiful page where she used some crackle medium around the base of a figure. So there's just, you know, this is one of those things you have to experiment. And then throughout the year in 2019, that's what we're going to do. We're going to experiment with all of it until we figure out what we love the most. Um, I think I've gone over most of the mediums here. We have some heavy body, we have some texture, we have some glass beads, we have the different mediums for thinning them out and smoothing them out. Let's just let this dry, we'll put it to the side, and I think I'm going to come back with a whole bunch of mark making tools to see what they do. So as if there weren't already too many choices. But that's the fun thing about this, doesn't it get you all excited to try something new? But I don't want it to be overwhelming for you. Uh, sometimes we find a favorite product and we stick with it and then we buy all these extra things and we never get a chance to play with it. I hope that throughout 2019 in True Colors, we're going to be able to change that for you by playing with all of these products and getting used to adding more interesting things to our artwork. Remember though, it's all up to you what you love and what you want to incorporate into your work. This is your signature style. You're discovering your own True Colors. So we'll just start here and I'll tell you, this is watercolor paint. This is what you do with it. it comes in a tube, you get yourself a nice little set like that, pour the little tube, uh, pour the paint into these little containers. You can buy all of this on Amazon. Um, and this is just a cute little um, container to put it in. You can also use one of the bigger round trays, but this is a portable one. They dry, but remember what I said about watercolor paint. Once it's dry, you can add water and it reactivates. That's the beauty of watercolor. It's the best for on the go art making. So I have that for watercolor. That's the tubes that they came out of. I also have this. I don't travel with it because it's much larger, but this is a really fun Kiritake brand watercolor paste. Not very expensive, but pretty high quality. I do love this one. I recommend it. 
Um, I also have these. I'm a little bit addicted to buying these little fun um, watercolor sets. You know, if you just want to limit your palette and only work with a few colors at one time, these are the little Prima um, watercolor sets that you can choose. This one is Decadent Pies, which is my favorite, and I think it's everybody's favorite. I also have Woodlands, but they have some very vibrant colors as well. I find that I'm quite surprised at how good the quality is, considering that it's not a very expensive paint. Uh, you have work um, from product from like Daniel Smith and Windsor and & Newton. They're higher quality. And uh, if you're a professional watercolor artist, those would be worth using. But because we're using mixed media, any of these would do well. Just don't buy the Cheap Artist Loft from Michaels. Those ones just dust up and brush right off your page when you're done using them, believe it or not. So there's a bunch of different watercolor choices for you. And I just picked up this because why not have some fun with some metallic colors, all right? We'll be playing with that another time. But in the meantime, what I really wanted to focus on right now were all of these different types of pastels and pencils. Because I know many of you have asked and have been curious and confused, which one do I use and how? Okay, so how do we use all of these different types of crayons and markers and pastels and pencils? Uh, a lot of it is exploration. I really want you to experiment and just play with the product you have. Use your art journals to test things out. But in the meantime, I'm sure you'd like a few little clues as to what is what. We have Coran Ash here, and it comes in oil pastel. It comes in another one called Neo Color 1, which I do not have, but I do have Neo Color 2. Let me tell you what they are. Oil pastel is oil-based. That means it is not water-soluble. You don't mix it with water. And in fact, it should be usually the last layer that you mark on your canvas or your paper. Putting acrylic over oil can be a bit of a challenge. Yeah, sometimes do I break the rules? Yes, especially when I just want to play. Well, so here we go. Here is green. How fun is that? Here's some oil pastel and they blend up really nicely together. So I can take the two and I can come back in with this and kind of blend and get myself a nice design going here. And I can create, I've created whole paintings using just oil paint pastels covering an entire sheet of paper, making my design and blending them beautifully. It's a really, uh, different kind of medium. It's it's not quite like anything else. It's not like these water soluble ones. So let me show you really quick. Let's just come in here really for fun and I'll show you. These are a little more like crayons that we're used to as kids. At least that's how they feel when you play with them. Well, it's similar. Let's see. This one's a similar color right here. So of course they're similar. They're the same company. Now if you already use the Neo Color 1, they use wax as their base. So this is oil as a base, this is a water base, and then the Neo Color 1 is a wax base. That means it's not water soluble either, but it's a little more user friendly with your acrylics. So if I'm going to take water now, I can easily add water and blend these into very beautiful washes. See? This one I can. So it is, it is easy to mix in with acrylic. You can put it under, over, doesn't matter. If you want to keep it from blending like that, you want to leave your mark, that's when we put a layer of matte medium or spray it with Spectrafix. And that'll help hold it in place. It's not perfect, but it'll help hold it in place. Whereas when we use the oil pastel here, I add water to it. It's not going anywhere except for it is ruining my brush. So Word to the wise, what can I use here? A little rubbing alcohol will help blend it a little or remove it a little bit. It can remove it a little. And you can also use um, product like um, odorless mineral, mineral spirits that you would use for oil painting that can help blend it. But usually for blending this, I just take the two and continue to work them back and forth until they're blended. They do have blending oil sticks as well. So this is really, it stays in place. Oil pastel, it's a last layer, doesn't move. These Neo colors are water-based. You can use water with them. Same with these here. These are pencils. Fun to use to make all kinds of details. Could you imagine just a squiggly bit? You want to make something abstract and fun and free and movement. Here, let's use the same color palette. You can leave some of those lines. You could even draw something that's like a little more making leaves, you know? Say I was working on a project where I wanted some details. And what do I do when I come back in with my brush and my water? All of this can be activated. Now, that leaves the line. So where the crayon here blends a little more smoothly, this one, you still see those lines underneath it. So it's got a little more of a 
maybe action going on when you use it because um, it's not going to be as smooth but here we go activate that water in it and I have myself a really like fun quick painterly project so it's really a matter of playing and experimenting I'm going to encourage that over and over again